All right, check it out. This is a 1996 Suzuki RM125. I know a lot of people in the comment section wanted me to do a Suzuki, so we're doing one today. Um, I found one for really cheap. It uh, was up for $1,000. So let's read the seller description. It says, blowing head gasket at the moment, slowly fixing it. Had full rebuild a couple hours ago. I believe it says, put new head gasket in and ride. Jetted proper, tires are good. I don't have enough time to ride. O or best price. Price is negotiable. If it only needs a head gasket, that's a really good deal. These go for around probably $1,700. So um, we're gonna go down there and uh, see if we can pick it up. We'll see what this thing looks like and see what the damage is. Hopefully it's just a head gasket and we can replace that and uh, rip this thing. If not, we'll be tearing into the engine and probably doing a full rebuild. So stay tuned, should be pretty fun. All right, here it is. Just got back. I'm picking this thing up. It's pretty nice. Do a couple close-up shots of it. Doesn't look too beat on. Looks like it was ridden in the sand. All right, so you guys just saw the little walk around of the bike, and as you can see, it's in pretty good condition. It is a 1996 RM125, and as you can see, the VIN is right here. And if you look at the 10th letter, this is how you find out the year. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the 10th letter is a T, and T matches up with 1996. Um, you just look up on Google the chart, and uh, it'll tell you the year. So. It is 1996, that is correct. A couple things wrong with it. <laughs> when you kick it over, listen to this. Hear that knocking? <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Almost sounds like crank. That is not good at all. The owner was pretty nice. Um, he said that he was riding it down the road and then all of a sudden he heard a big pop and then it shut off and it wouldn't start again. He said that a guy came and helped him on the side of the road and he kicked it over. He's like, oh, it should start. And he kicked it over a couple times and it made this clanking sound. So that's all he knows. He said it was a blown head gasket, but obviously it's not a blown head gasket. It's something more serious than that. Um, it's making a weird sound. So usually that's not the the, the greatest thing in the world. He did say that it was rebuilt a couple hours ago. And he said he gave me the receipts for that. Um, the receipts are right here. I'm not going to show the other side of it because it has phone numbers and stuff on it. But basically, I'll read off the receipt. Um, it said rebuild crank, main bearings and seals, lower end gasket. Um, main bearing, uh, let's see, what else does it have? Oil seals, shift forks, and crank shaft drive gear. Um, this is the old shaft and bearing. You can see the bearing on here is completely gone. <laughs> it just melted. So that's great. Hopefully the same thing didn't happen. But uh, we'll figure that out today. We're gonna go over the whole bike now and just kinda of look at the aftermarket parts on it and I kinda of go over the whole thing so you guys get a feel for it. Um, it does have brand new tires on it. The guy said that those were brand new installed. So the tires are really nice. Um, and the back one is pretty nice as well. Bearings feel good all around. Wheel bearings are good. No sloppiness in those. Plastics look decent. 
they will clean up for sure. A couple scrapes and stuff and scratches, but nothing too bad. I did notice the one piece of plastic has a rip out of it right here. But that's the only crack in the plastics I can find. Even has the rotor guard on it. Usually people take those off. It does have um, carbon fiber guards. So I don't know if those are fake carbon fiber or real. Looks maybe like it's fake. Um, what else? Sprockets are getting a little rough. Getting pretty pointy. And they're kind of tilting one way. The wave is pointing towards the left a little bit. So sprocket definitely needs to be changed out. Um, the front sprocket looks a little better than the rear. But when you twist it over backwards, oh, it did make a sound before. Like it wasn't lined up properly. So that's probably going to need some work. Rims are all good. No like big dents or anything in the rims. And uh, like I said before, it looks like he was riding in some sand. Very sandy. And he said that the tire was getting cut up from the chain because the guy had the chain adjusted wrong on here. It looks like maybe, yeah, the tires, look how far the tires go on that way. The tire needs to come back this way. So that's why it was making that weird sound. Probably the chain coming off the sprocket there. Uh, all the brakes work, so back brake and front brake both work. So it does have the stock um, pipe on it, but it does have the aftermarket silencer. Pro Circuit 304 factory sound stainless steel. You can see right there, that's pretty nice. Let's take a look at the air filter. Take the seat off of here, see what's going on. The air filter looks pretty good. It's a little gunked up, but at least it's on there. Looks like it might be a moose racing. Air filter in there. Smell the gas. See what that smells like. Yep, gas smells good. So it probably hasn't been sitting for too long. New grips on it, it looks like. Nothing too fancy. Forks aren't leaking any oil or anything. That's good. So it looks pretty nice. Um, pretty complete, pretty nice. I'm not seeing really too many problems with it. Let's check out the coolant and see what that looks like. Because the guy said the head gasket failed. But uh, from the sound, I'm guessing that's probably not what it was. Yeah, the, the coolant's topped off in there. So it most likely is not the head gasket. If it was the head gasket, coolant would be leaking into the engine. We'll check out the oil next and see what that looks like. Let's see, oil is right here. Hopefully it's not milky white or anything like that. It shouldn't be, because it looks like the coolant's topped off. So I'd be very surprised if it was milky white. It's like... Pretty clear looking. Looks like brand new oil. So the guy probably wasn't lying about that. That's, that's very clear. So, it probably was rebuilt a couple hours ago. Looks like it doesn't have much ride time. And uh, the receipt said the total cost of the rebuild was really cheap. Let me see. With parts and labor, total came to $185. Only 3.5 hours of labor. 185 bucks for everything. So that's really cheap. That's probably why it failed. <laughs> But uh, we will see. Hopefully, it could be something easy. I don't know. We will see here. We'll start with the spark plug, probably. Get that off. See if it has spark. See what compression is. All right. We've got access to the cylinder now. Let's see if we've got some spark here. Looks like this was taken apart. Hopefully that's not a bad sign. <laughs> Who thinks it has spark? Oh, uh oh. 
spark plug is out of it. That is not good. <laughs> that is not good at all. Usually when the spark plug's out of it already, that means the guy has looked at it. <laughs> so, that's not good. We'll see what the damage is here. Take out the spark plug, see if it still isn't knocking some. See what the spark plug looks like too. It's pretty white. So, I don't think it's been ridden too long. It's starting to turn brown, so. It looked like it was probably jetty correctly. Alright, let's see if it has spark here. I don't really want to touch it, but. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely has spark. We might get lucky. It might just be like a ring or something getting caught up, but I highly doubt that. Alright, one of these is for the coolant drain. Um, usually it's the one with a gasket or a crush washer on it, but uh, none of them have that, so it's going to be kind of a guess here which one is holding the coolant. Let's see. Usually it's the bottom one. Yep. That would be the one right there. I'll probably shoot on that. Oh, there we go. Cut that drain a little bit. I'll put the screw back in. And get this coolant line off, and then we'll take the head off. And uh, that'll kind of tell us probably what's going on. All right, this coolant line has to come off, and then one, two, three, four, five nuts have to come off. And then we have to get this engine um, mount off as well. Right here, held on by one, two, three, three big bolts. Looks like that was already taken off as well. Oh, really tight. Those, yeah, those were tight on there. These were never taken off before. These are the gaskets for it, I guess. They're just like little O-ring gaskets on it. You can see, like that. And there's a center. So apparently that's all there is for a gasket. Just two O-rings. That seems like that's not correct, but could be. Let's see what it looks like in here. Doesn't feel like the cylinder scratched or anything. The cylinder doesn't look scratched at all. What the heck? So 
we might get away with the piston being good still. Might just get the crank. I'm trying to look at the cylinder to see if there's any scratches and there's nothing on the cylinder yet, at least. That's good. We'll take off the pipe next, get that off of there, and then um, take a look at taking off the cylinder. That'll kind of tell us if the crank is good or not once we get off the cylinder. So we gotta get off the pipe and the carburetor. All right, power valve under here. I believe on these there's a rod coming up to activate the power valve on them. There we go, popped up. Ooh, that's some black oil right there coming out of the power valves. But you can see the, the rod right here that's connected. You gotta disconnect that in order for the rod to come off. Or you can just take this guy off, but this should just pull right out of here. There we go. There we go. So that's disconnected. Now the whole cylinder should come off after we get this guy out of there. Pretty tight on there. Kind of hidden back here. Now that sound could have been the power valve, so let's. Nope. Not the power valves. <laughs> All right, let's get the cylinder off of here next. Rubber melt. See if it comes off of here. Oh yeah. I wonder if we have to take that tube off of there as well. Well, the gasket surface looks good. No imperfections there. Piston actually looks pretty good. Alright, let's see. Oh. Rod bearing gone. <laughs> Holy cow. A little up and down play. <laughs> Just a tad. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've never seen that bad before. Like usually it's like a couple, it's like maybe a millimeter up and down play. Look at that. Side to side is good. 
barely any side to side play, but up and down. It's horrible. <laughs> Holy cow, that, that bearing is smoked in there. Well, that's the culprit. <laughs> At least we don't need the new piston though. Piston looks great. Cylinder looks amazing on this thing. So it's just the crank. Check out the cylinder. Perfect in there. Surprisingly, usually once that uh, rod bearing goes, the piston gets all kitty wampus in there and starts scratching it up. So we kind of lucked out there. But um, yeah, I've never seen a rod bearing that bad before. Like the bearings are completely gone in there. That is crazy. <laughs> I'm guessing the crank bearings are bad too. But uh, we'll look for a crank for it. Hopefully it's not too expensive. But I don't know why it keeps on failing. That's kind of weird. All right, bad news. Just looked up what the price of a new crank goes for or a rebuilt one because they don't sell new ones anymore. Um, a rebuilt one goes for $650 on eBay with a new rod it says. So they said the crank is rebuilt with new rod and that's $600. And they said they take off $150 if you sell them or send in your old crank if that's not damaged. So that's uh, not too good. If anyone knows uh, a person that rebuilds cranks for uh, relatively cheap, not $600, uh, let me know in the comments because I'd send it out to you guys um, if you know how or if you guys know of a person that knows how because um, a rod only costs, what, like 100 bucks with the bearing? So, yeah, um, <laughs> that's kind of the predicament I'm in. I don't really want to spend $600 on just a used crank. So, hopefully, hopefully this crank is still usable and we can just replace the rod. But I have a feeling since the bearing keeps on going bad that, that maybe the crank is bent or something and not uh, working properly. So we are going to now take the engine out completely out of the bike and then we are going to take the whole engine apart, split the cases and try to get that crank out of there. Try to break this swing arm. Not off of here. All right, we'll start by getting off the stator cover. Taking a look at the flywheel. See what that looks like. Alright, flywheel looks normal, nothing weird about that, looks pretty good. Come to the uh, clutch side of the engine, start tearing this thing apart.
Some of these go all the way through. This one. Yep. There's some coolant coming out of there. Yep. Cover off first. All right, let's get the clutch off of here. Starts with the friction plate. Ends with the friction plate. battery. Alright, waiting for my drill to charge up. We're going to take off this gear right here. There is a washer behind there. This is a, there's a little bearing with a washer behind there. Like that. Just so when I put it back together, I know what's up. Alright, that goes like that. Washer, washer in the back of there, this whole thing comes off, bearing behind there, I can leave that on for right now, nothing behind there. All right, using the air gun we just got off this bolt and this gear comes off right here. All right, I believe we've got everything off to split the cases right now at this point. So let's go to the other side and get the flywheel off. All right, then I've got a puller for this reverse thread. Forward in this. All right. Flywheel looks good. No damage to that at all. Woodruff key. Here's in here. 
should probably mark. Looks like they did. Stagers off of there. And the Woodruff key. Almost forgot when you get the reeds out. Reeds look pretty good. Nothing wrong with those. All right, that was giving me a little trouble splitting the case, but finally got her out. And uh, everything looks pretty good. We'll punch that crank out next, and then we'll inspect everything. All right, now I put the puller on the opposite side of the crank. We're gonna push it out now. Alright, so this crank bearing doesn't feel too bad, but look at all the shavings and the bearings on the rod, all caked in there. I'm guessing that's why the main crank bearings failed on this side. There's probably a bunch of metal shavings in there. Here's the crank. Looks like it got pretty hot right there. see the bearings in there. So this is just pushed out and then a new rod is installed. But on this one, it looks like maybe the crank is junk. Hard to tell. Let's see if I can get a good shot of the bearings. And these these need to be balanced. I don't think the guy balanced it or anything like that. So that's probably why it failed. But you can see it got really hot right there. And let's see, that is the side where this bearing's bad. So that would make sense why that bearing would be bad because that got too hot as well. Probably locked up. So we'll see if we can send out this crank to be rebuilt and uh, go from there. Everything else looks good. Probably gonna punch all these bearings, get some new crank bearings for it as well, and then go through these gears just to make sure those are all good, inspect the whole thing, and then um, see if we can fix this crank up. But yeah, if anyone knows of a person that rebuilds these cranks, let me know in the comments section it would be very helpful. Otherwise, maybe I'll buy a press and the tools for it and try to attempt it. it doesn't look like it's too bad. But anyway guys, that'll wrap up today's video. We got a lot accomplished. Um, <laughs> the seller of the bike, I think, knew that the crank bearing was bad again. And, um, you know, by the sound of it, you probably could tell. He said it was a head gasket, and it was far from that. The head gasket actually looked really good. There wasn't any coolant leaking or anything. Piston and cylinder look great. Everything else on the bike looks great, except for that crank. And uh, it's funny because it was just replaced. And it looks the exact same as this one. So, I don't know what the guy did wrong, but something happened and it failed for the second time. So anyway guys, stay tuned for next video when we probably have the crank rebuilt and then put this whole thing back together. 
and ride it for the first time. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And until next time, we are out.